Well, there he was, and here he is uh, <laughs> at home. Get up and applaud, Mr. <laughs> Little Richard. Let me tell you about Elvis Presley called him the greatest. Smokey Robinson said he was the beginning of rock and roll. Mick Jagger admitted half of what I know I learned from watching his stage act. John Lennon says he was better than Elvis. Paul McCartney said he was my idol. Keith Richards acknowledged that he was the most, the most exciting moment of my life was appearing on stage with Little Richard. Dick Clark simply called him the greatest rock and roll legend of our time. And here he sits. Thank nice you. Nice to have you Thank with you. us. Thank you so much. And the occasion for your coming to midday and going around is the fact that you have a, an autobiography. That's right. Which I have read. Finally. 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 And you know, you were even crazier than I thought. <laughs> I, I, always knew, I always knew you were far away, but you were, you were out there. I, was, I am. I'm, I'm out there. I'll be out there for a while, too. Uh, I'm, I'm just so glad that um, while I'm alive, I'm 51 years old now, I'll be 52. December the 5th. I just wanted the book on the market, you know, while I'm still alive. They usually wait till you die and put out yeah. a book. Well, now you, know? you can make sure it's the way you want I, it. That's right. I wanted to smell the roses, too. You know, I didn't want them to put them on and I couldn't feel them. You in. were not afraid to write truthfully about that's some right. things that people would not. You weren't afraid to write about drugs. You weren't afraid to write, we'll talk about sex, all of your sex life. Uh, and uh, about rock and about uh, spiritual, my spiritual life. Racism. And racism. I, I really told it all right there in that book. Well, let's talk about some of these okay. things. Okay. First thing I want, let, let's go backwards. What are you doing? Other than you're promoting a book now. Yes. But the book promotion is over, and hopefully you got a bestseller and you're very yes. pleased with it. You go back to what you've been doing the last year. How have you been occupying your, your life on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, um, I am an evangelist. And so what I do, I travel all over the world. I was in Jamaica, in Kingston. Uh, um, I was there for two months. I was in Barbados, uh, um, I was in Port of Spain, I was in Fernando, I was in um, St. Lucia's uh, uh, running meetings, and then I've been, I've been going all over the world. Uh, but you're not performing. Meetings. Yes. You, you're not doing I don't Tutti do Frutti, you're not doing none of that. No, I let all that go. Did, is it now, in the press material, it describes that you've denounced this. Have you denounced rock and roll, Little Richard? Uh, 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 I wouldn't use the word denounce. Uh, at the age of 51, I just don't do it. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, um, because uh, I'm wiser now than I used to be. Um, um, you know, I, I just believe Tina Turner is remarkable. Uh, um, I know her age, which I won't, uh, you know, say. But Will you hold up fingers? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that on <laughs> Tina. Tina's my baby. I love, I love you, Tina. She, she's beautiful. Uh, no, but w what it is, when I see Tina jumping all around the stage and leaping up in the air, I say, oh boy, and throwing up her legs and able to bring them back down. See, it's one <laughs> thing to throw them up, but to bring them back, <laughs> that's another story. I said, boy, this is remarkable. Uh, I just decided that at this age and stage of my life, um, there are so many people that have came from me, uh, such as uh, oh, uh, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, which was my guitar player. Billy Preston was my organist. James Brown, I discovered him. He was my vocalist. And Joe Tex. Uh, um, David Bowie came from me. The Beatles was my singing group. I know that. The Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger was my group. Uh, uh, and Elvis Presley came from me, Little Richard. See, people don't realize that. I was on RSA Victor before Elvis Presley. It was called Camden at the time. They put the black artists on Camden, and I was over there in 1951. I was recording, yeah. and that's when people said that Little Richard said uh, he's the king or something, uh, 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 some, but they just don't know. I've, it's, it's, it's never been a time that I never was, really. I can't hardly think of well, time. You're, you're still out there that's through what, everyone else's music. That's right. But don't, look, suppose Tina calls you on the phone and she says, hey, Richard, let's do the greatest music video in the world. Let's come back and let's do Rip It Up, or let's do Slipping and a Sliding, like it's never been done before, you and me. We're going to make the greatest music video in the world. You got Tina on the other end of the line. Would you come back and do it? I said, Tina, I love you, girl. You are a sweet girl. I said, but I am going to watch you jump up in the air. And I'm going to watch you throw that leg up. <laughs> I ain't going to try that. I, I may not bring mine down. I'm telling you right, too. Okay. <laughs> <I'm> you're, you're, <laughs> Little Richard is not going to do it again. No, no. I'm through with rock and roll as far as me being a performer. Uh, all right. I've done my job. You know, I built You've the... You've done see, your job. See, uh, uh, now, there was many builders, you know, many black artists that contributed to the building and many yeah. white artists. 
but I was the architect. So the building has been constructed, and I just want to sit in the building and, and watch okay. the repairing. Now, let's, talk, let's talk about architecture then, yes, because yes. you are one of the pillars, the that's, foundations. That's one of the right. foundations is that in the ground. Hold that building. Right. Now, what went into that cement that made your foundation? Who influences an original? You're an original. Yes. Well, who influenced me was, it's very strange, Mahalia Jackson. When I was a little boy, it wasn't no rock. It was swinging sway with Sammy Kay. And my mom and dad was just jumping up and just throwing each other around on the floor. Dad was throwing mother over between his legs. I used to be saying, oh, mother's going to hit her head. And, and just throwing her all <laughs> up under there. And, and, and uh, it was swinging sway with Sammy Kay. I couldn't swing and I couldn't sway, so I rocked. Uh, uh, see, rock and roll is really, really um, rhythm and blues up tempo. Uh, right. Uh, um, what happened is, Alan Freed started calling it the rock and roll. I remember he brought me to I the got, Paramount I want to ask you about Alan Freed. Let's go to Alan Freed, okay? okay? Because there's a lot to talk about here because yeah. we got a lot of ground to cover. I want to ask you about Alan Freed. Alan Freed was credited as being one of the discoverers of rock and roll. He was also discredited as being involved in the payola scandal. What do you remember about the man at the time? Was he a guy that was really on the take? Did he deserve He was the what greatest. Happened? I've never met nobody like Alan Freed. He was a young, good-looking Jewish guy that was really uh, together. I just, I, I love him, and I, I, I could just, I tell you, I would, I like the ties, tie for him, or whatever. Uh, uh, he, he was just so beautiful. He called a spade a spade. He called a, 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 a nook a nook, a hook a hook. Uh, he played the records. If you had a good record, he would play it. He don't care whether you was black or white. Yeah. He brought me to the Paramount Theater, and my name in the big lights, Little Richard. You know, I'm just new from the country, from Macon, Georgia. And I'm coming out of the country where I've been eating plantains and, and, and sleeping on the floor and carrying water on my head. <laughs> uh, 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 and I, my neck was very tired. Uh, uh, um, but what, what, what happened is, when he brought me here, he put my name up there in these big lights, Little Richard, and he had... Uh, Paul Anker opening my show, Buddy Holland and the Crickets, Larry Williams, Bona Maroney, Short Fat Fanny, the Clovers, everybody was on the show. And this man is the father of disc jockeys. He uh -huh. is, he's the king of the DJs. And I don't think he's discredited. I don't care whether it was Payola or Leola. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 um, he is not discredited. He has the credit for me. You was the greatest, Alan. I know you can't hear me. You gone, but tell uh, Miss Freed, wherever you are, he's all right. All right, good. Now, I want to ask you about this. When we talk about, going back to what I say, what, what influences an original? What influences an original? What got you into playing the piano, standing up, and all that crazy stuff you did at the well, piano? Well, the reason I stand up because I got tired of sitting down, really. <laughs> Oh, God. I got tired of sitting down. I stood up and I threw my leg up on the piano. I played with my toes, uh, 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 with my elbows, and, and I would lay on my back and play the piano from the back. Uh, but my, my, my influence was Mahalia Jackson, Clara Ward Singers, uh, um, Ruth Brown, Roy Brown, Elmo James. Elmo. Elmo James, although he was singing blues, you know, good morning, yeah. little school girl, can I go home with you? And I just, I, you know, I just, I, I would just sing that all night. I would, and I, I got on the piano, I couldn't play at the time, but I always wanted to, and I just tore up my mother's piano. I tore that piano up. I tell you, I just knocked them keys and pushed them keys and hit them keys to find it. I think the keys got tired of me and said, <laughs> I'm going to play today. I want, let's, let's go back to your original. One of the things that you write about, and one of the things that saddens me in reading the book, is your view that you were really ripped off frequently in your career, that you had made bad deals. What was your original, your initial pay scale with specialty records? That launched it. And is, you know, if you got, as I have all these little specialty records at home, that's a 45 record. It costs 89 cents, mm -hmm. right? That's what 2D And I didn't get not a dime of that 89 cents you spent. Uh, uh, I'm glad you bought it, but I didn't get a penny of it. It's a shame they kept all of that 89 cents and didn't give me any of it. I haven't been paid. I was getting a half a cent a record, which was very low. But I never got the two halves to put together <laughs> to make a penny. Uh, uh, um, it's there, there's been 25 years that I haven't received a dime. Special to records, which is special to records, which is Art Roop, Venice Music. They sold Venice Music to ATV, which is Sam Trust. They don't even send me a Christmas card. I see my tunes on all the television stations. I see my tunes in all the movies. I see the mail orders. I see, like Waylon Jennings re, re, uh, recorded 
Yeah. Lucille, and it was number one in the country film not long ago. I didn't get a dime. VJ Records didn't pay and me. These, these are songs you wrote. Yes. These are just things. You, I, I wrote these your songs. Names and on my that. name, Rock and Roll Classics. Uh, uh, these are classic tunes today. Uh, uh, Mercury Records never paid me. Brumswick Records never paid me. Uh, Art LeBeau never paid me. Well, Lou Droza never paid me. Relaugh Records, but Harry Brothers, they never paid me. No. Then, then they sued me for slander because I because what I said. Well, Richard, if you you know, how did the, what, did, what were you doing wrong? I, I mean, didn't do you, nothing wrong. You they betray yourself wrong. as a victim, totally. Yeah. You yeah. must have been doing something wrong to have such bad deals all the time. Uh, no, I didn't do nothing wrong. I just found, I believe they thought I was a fool. Uh, they thought I was a little black fool from Macon, Georgia. It, it's not that I was wrong. They were just crooks, and they was wrong. You know, they, they just took my kindness for weakness and my goodness for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they didn't want to pay me. And see, and what made me want to go after this money? Now, I'm not the only artist that's been ripped off. There are many, 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 many black artists that have been ripped off, and I'm really speaking for them also. But, and there are many white artists, not only black. Mm -hmm. There are many white artists. Mick Jagger was ripped off. The Beatles was ripped off when they came out. Uh, but they made so much that they still got some. Uh, uh, see, my, I didn't get nothing. Uh, uh, when I saw Esther Phillips die, when I saw Big Mama Thornton die, when I saw Jackie Wilson die, Jackie, uh, 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 Joe, Joe Tex, um, ZZ Hill, and many artists that died. Now, some of those artists got paid, but many of those artists didn't get nothing. When they died, they went around through the streets with a cup taken up collection. And I was determined, I said, that's not gonna happen to me. I saw a bill a home called The Bouquet of Love, for black, white, red, brown, and yellow. So when the entertainers become old and when they get afflicted, when they get mm -hmm. sick, they have a place to stay and then they can be buried with class and with dignity. Where is that That's, located? I'm gonna, it's oh, not you're gonna do We're it. gonna build from this book here, the royalties from this book, I'm gonna take so yeah. much of it, I'm gonna give it to different organizations and I'm gonna take so much of this and I'm gonna build the bouquet of love yeah. for all people and if they pay me, and which I know they are because God is a just God, and when I get the money, I'm going to use right. it for the book of love. I'll, I'll, let's move on from, uh, we're talking about the foundation to the many people you've influenced. Can you recall some of your early meetings with the Beatles? Oh, yes. And what they said to you, what Ooh. you said to them, yes. where you were, and, yes. and what it was like making early music with the Beatles? I can see it right now, almost like a vision. When I first went to Liverpool, Brian Epstein's daddy owned it. Um, a lot of record stores and he brought me to the ballroom there and he, when I walked in he said Richard I got four guys would you mind taking a picture with my group he said one day I hope they record and they become famous he said he says I give you a percentage to take this tape back to the states which I didn't even take it uh -huh. I didn't believe they was gonna make it I must tell you the truth well, now, okay so you sat in the club and you saw their set. Did yeah. you see their set? Uh, no, I heard it from the, I was behind stage. Right, I so was in the dressing room. What we, now they're talking about, that may even been before Ringo was part of the group. No, Ringo had just came was, with them. With the group, okay. Mm -hmm. What do you remember thinking about what they were doing there? Well, they were singing, love, love me do. You know, I yeah. love you. So please, 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 love me do. They would have sung Good Golly Miss Molly, but I was on the show, they couldn't sing it. Right. Uh, um, uh, they sound good. Paul was unbelievable. Uh, uh, to me, I felt that he could make it uh -huh. himself. I felt that the Rolling Stones could make it all the way because they were so rocker, yeah. really rockers type group. But um, after I went on the stage and they, they were so excited, they just wanted to touch me. I took them with me to Hamburg, Germany, to the Star Club, where they went on right before they me. They had well, my right? name out in the streets, and the Beatles had a little name in Hamburg where they had been going out working yeah, in the Star Club. club there. Oh, they was bringing all the groups out of England there, yeah. you know, to perform, and, and so. Uh, we went there and we were sitting in the dressing room between shows, me and Paul, John, and they were listening to me and they liked it that, woo They wanted that so bad, you know, and Paul could do it, you know, and, 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 and he would just get, you know, uh, uh, at, he couldn't do it as good, he could do it, but not what he wanted to be. What, what did they then do from that point, in your view as a musician, mm -hmm. that in addition to the shrewd management that helped launch them, how did, how did they grow musically? I, I think that they grew very rapidly because what they did was, uh, I, I think the Beatles themselves were surprised with the phen phenomenal success that happened to them. I'm sure they were shocked because what, they went back and got the old music. They went back and got me, Chuck Berry, Chuck Berry yeah. uh, 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 Bo Diddley. Uh, they went back and picked us up, you know, and Mick Jagger went back and got the uh, uh, Muddy Waters and, and Elmo James and Highland Wolf. And, and they just, what they did, they brought it back to the public. Uh, instead of coming out of America, they brought it from Europe. It. And threw it back across the water, so now here it is, it's good. 
And then they had the ability to write good stuff themselves. Oh, they're obviously. fantastic. Some of the, we greatest, take a break. the greatest writers. Unbelievable. We'll take a break. Our phone number 570-1199. And lots more with and Little Richard. And I love Richard. you. Yeah. All right, we're back with Little Richard. Uh, I, I don't know if I've even shown you the book. This is The Life and Times of Little Richard, the quasar of rock. The quasar, a distant, shining star. That, that gives has, off energy. That gives off energy. Yeah. You still have a lot of energy. Left, <laughs> I'd say. Oh, boy. Uh, look, I want to read uh, something from the book here. Let me, let me get this uh, straight. Page 188. Then I want you to comment on okay. this because okay. you, you put everything straight out in the book. Talking about drugs. Mm -hmm. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars getting high. Right? Right. I missed That's a lot of engagements being laid up. I got behind financially. I got behind in my life. I got so heavily into drugs for a year that I never went to see my mother. That's, say, right. Right? That's right. You said they should have called me Little Cocaine. That's right. I was sniffing so much of this stuff. My nose got big enough to back a diesel truck in and unload That's right. it. That's right. Drive it right out again. Right? <laughs> That's right. How, how can you, you're $1,000 a day on Coke. It was more than that, really. I, I just loved it. You know, I would go to bed at night, and uh, there are many people that are out there in television land that know what it, what it is to get tired. I had a hectic, my schedule was just really, was really hard for me. And I would get up in the mornings, and I would get a one-in-one, -one, take a one-in-one. -one. I would get pure cocaine out of Mexico. It would be shining like diamonds. You would think I had a bag of diamonds, and it was only a bag of coke, folk. <laughs> and I would put this stuff in my nose. I start off with a one and one and end up with a 12 and 12. I took so much cocaine to when I would blow my nose, nothing but flesh and blood would be on this oh, hand because my membranes was coming out. Mm. Then I was shooting in my leg. I was, guys were shooting me with the needle. Um, and I would mix cocaine and heroin together. Then I became an alcoholic. And one night I was appearing in um, Los Angeles at Magic Mountain. And my friend, 21 years old, made reservations to come to hear me. He never did arrive. He got shot in the head. Mm. Another friend of mine, a light-complected black guy, was coming out of a building one night. His name is Curly Knight. And these guys thought he was white, some young black guys. And they cut him up with a butcher knife and put him in the trunk of the car, uh, 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 which the color don't matter, you know, whether he's black or green or blue or whatever. Uh, he was a man that God made. Uh, then I had another friend that had a heart attack. Ike and Tina Turner had an engagement in Miami, Florida. Tina got sick and couldn't go, and they wanted a wild performer, so they called me. And I went in her place, I went down there, and I made a lot of money. I came back, my brother Tony wanted to borrow some money from me. I said, I'll let you have it. The next morning, he got up and walked his little boy and watered his lawn, and he fell dead, my ba one of my baby brothers. And it shook my mind. It, it started me to thinking more seriously about my life than I've ever thought in my life. Mm. Well, and it's all in the book. When you are so strung out on drugs like that, I mean, I've interviewed a lot of people who have made that transition. Sometimes you got to hit the bottom in order to clean up, your, mm -hmm. to totally clean up. Now, I want to say one thing. There's people watching right now who have a coke problem, yes. have a, a, an alcohol problem, yes. a heroin. They're watching. They're yes. li listening to what you're saying. Yes. They wish they had that gleaming bag. Of, yes. What do you say to somebody right now about how to stop, even well, though they know that they should, they still want that high? Well, you know, uh, um, I didn't go to a doctor. I didn't go to a counselor. I was a miracle who was worked on me by God. I stopped overnight, and I was a heavy addict. But it was just the power that came over me, and I knew it was God. But I like to tell the people out in uh, television land that, uh, you know, everything sparkle is not a diamond, and everything shine is not gold. But I want to say to you that the grass may look greener on the other side, but believe me, it's just as hard to cut. You know, you don't have to do that. You know, think on positive things and positiveness. You know, uh, uh, things that, uh, goals that you want to reach and strive hard to reach them. And you can make it if you try. Believe me, I was a little poor boy down in Georgia, the third child of 12, and we was poor, poor, poor. And it's in my book. You've seen it on me on television talking about my book. So. Uh, 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 it's in the stores. Read it. Uh, uh, You'll find I, out about all of it. I want to ask you, there's one, one other, I want to dwell on drugs, but I found this a fascinating statement. The drugs brought me to realize what homosexuality had made me. When I felt that, I wanted to hurt. I wanted to kill. I don't understand that. The drugs brought me to realize what homosexuality had made me. I don't understand that either. Well, you wrote it. Uh, uh, I don't understand the way it's. Well, there. you say homosexuality takes over your your whole mind, but it's an illusion. It's not really any excitement. It's like masturbation. It's false. It's it's not a completeness. When you hug and kiss a man, you feel like something is missing afterwards. 
Well, what I, I want to say this about uh, uh, the, uh, the word homosexual, personally, I don't like that word homosexual. Uh, uh, I want to say it, gay, being gay. Uh, uh, I would like to say that, uh, you know, a long time ago, I've learned, I've came a long way, and, and I've learned that how artistic uh, being, uh, gay people are. Uh, the reason I know how artistic they were because I was one myself and, and uh, I, I, from a little boy, and I know that uh, they're so lovable and they're so kind. You know, it, discrimination and segregation is so heavily still in the world today. It's here now. Mm -hmm. uh, how people segregate against a person because they're gay, uh, because of what they are, and then they want to find out who's gay and who's not. It's one thing that I've learned in my evangelism, and I teach this, that they are human beings. And I'm a human being. After learning that I was a human being, because I, I thought I was an animal, and I didn't know that I was human personally. And, and since I learned that I'm a human being, I've learned to, that, that all of us are human beings and that we all can be saved, we all can behave, we all can be brave, uh, uh, and that God loves us all, and that right. he don't separate or discriminate against anyone, and that Jesus died on the cross for gay people. He came out of the tomb for gay people. He stands in the presence of the Father Jehovah for gay right. people today. We got a couple people want to talk to you on the phone. Thank you. Little Richard on the line. Hello? Hello? Yes, my name is Keith and I'm from Brooklyn. All right, go ahead, Keith, you're uh, on. Okay, for the king. My question is, what did you call your, did, before Alan Free coined the phrase rock and roll, how were you describing the music that you were playing? To I, people, to the public. I used to call it the real thing. Okay. All right, good. All right, thanks. Th you're welcome. Uh, Keith, let's go to another call. Yeah. Uh, Bill Boggs on Midday, hello. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, my name is Tom from New Jersey, and yeah. I have two questions for you. One is, uh, what do you think of the performers now that are selling music with music videos when I know it wasn't around when you, you, know, you were performing, but how do you feel about it now? I just wish they had been here when I started. But you know, I considered my first movie as a video, The Girl Can't Help It, yeah. uh, which I, I think I was one of the first people to have one. You should uh, see uh, that, uh, that's uh, true. The there Girl is, Can't Help It, uh, um, with video. Jane Mansfield and myself, and then it was a very big hit for 20th Century Fox. To me, that was one of the first videos. Yep, it's true. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah it, was, it was gorgeous, and, and I'm proud to see the advancement that has been made in music, period. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. You're welcome. Another call? Bill Boggs on the line with Little Richard here. Hello. Yes, Richard. First of all, I'd like to say that I love watching you perform, and I think you're a wonderful performer. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to ask you is about uh, nine months ago, I was in a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. And I am also a musician, and I write music for shows and uh, also perform in them myself. What I'd like to ask you is, in any dependency, when you depend on one thing, or when I depended on the alcohol and drugs, um, it helped to alleviate a lot of my fears in performing and in writing. <clears throat> and um, how did you deal with, now that you've lost that dependency, getting over the fear of writing and performing and just doing it on your own? I had a fear of uh, losing my creativity. Question. It's a good question. Well, what I do, uh, now I've just put something else in the place of that. You know, I keep busy. I, I, I don't like to be idle at all, at any time, you know. I stay busy, and, and as I've made the statement earlier, I think positive. You know, I don't entertain no negative vibe. I believe that you're just what you think you are. I believe that if you think that you can't overcome, you can't. If you believe that you can, you can, because thoughts are things. Believe that. Yeah, thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. If you believe that you can overcome, you can overcome. If you believe you can walk away, you can walk away. If you believe that you can't make another day, you can't. You must believe that you can. The Bible even says that. The Lord says, so is a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, you're just what you think you are. And if, let every man be persuaded by his own, own opinion. It's a choice that you have to make. Thank you for Thank that you. call. God bless you. God bless you, baby. You're quite welcome. Uh, we'll take a break, and we'll return with Little Richard right after this. Thank you. Uh, we're back with Little Richard, and Little Richard's here with one of his old friends. Yes, I used to Ooh. jump all over the top of these things. And my brother be said, oh, Richard, please get down. He thought I was too old to be up there, but I was up there. Man, what was the first piano? Where was it in the house? Uh, in the front room. We called it the living room, but it was just the front room. Just the front room? And we had an old upright piano, and my grandfather had gave it to my mother for me. And that's the piano I learned how to play on. Now, I want to ask you if, uh, where this came from. I have in front of me the lyrics to Tutti Frutti, oh, which is in Little Richard's book, all right? That's right. Now, wop, babaloo, mop. A lop. Bam, boom. Yeah. Uh, who thought that up? <laughs> Me. 
I thought it up. I don't know where it came from, though. I don't know who gave it to me. But uh, um, i tell you what it is, really, though. Uh, one night I had forgot what to say. And, and I just said, wop, ba ba loom ba ba la bam boom All right. And, and, then, I, I, and it was over. Then the song goes on to say, tutti frutti, all Rudy, five times. <laughs> Uh, but that's not the original way it was. It, uh, uh, you can't say certain things on the television. No, I know that. Uh, 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 it was Tutti Frutti, uh, good something else. A and they told me, it, you know, it was risque. That's what they called it at the time. But uh, um, uh, I, I got a girl to help clean the things up. And then I got a gal <laughs> named Sue. She knows what to do. I got a gal named Daisy. She almost drive me crazy. Woo! <laughs> And own, own. That's that's it. That's what happened. That's it. That how, was it. How how are the hands? How are the fingers? It's all right. They they still move. I haven't play, played in so long. It still moves. Though. You know, I um, my fingers are still there. And my fingers, hang on, my fingers were so fast. It was just fast, you know, and, and Jerry Lee came out and, you know, he was playing country, came out and took my, started using the same thing, and he's just a, he did that to make it sound a little different. Oh, but that, 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 oh that hurts your finger, too, when you do that. Jerry, I see why you stopped doing it. It hurts your finger. <laughs> how, 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 did the, how did the beginning of slipping and sliding go? Oh, boy, I, am, I really can't. You know what, earnestly, you all may not believe me, but you know, it's the first time in 20-some years, I haven't played the piano in years. Really? Yes, and earnestly, you have to really play. A piano is like playing ball. You have to play to keep it. You know, if you don't, you lose it. Uh, um, since I've been speaking, i got a lady to play for me now. You know, I don't even play for myself. Yeah? I, I think I'm going to start back, but i got to practice. You know, my mother passed not long ago, so it kind of put me in a little depression way there. Uh, uh, um, but uh, um, in the I, I know I used to do a song. Uh, say, He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hand. And used to he's got the whole. That's it. That's all of it, you all. I am. Uh, <coughs> my thumb is hurting. Oh. But it's all in my book, The Life and Times of <laughs> Little Richard. You've got to read it. Let me show them. I, I have held up show. my own book. Look, y'all. Isn't that wonderful? A down to earth guy from Macon, Georgia, Little Richard. Just another one of the guys. Just right? another one hey, of the guys from what, the street. What, what, about, what about the period of the. The drag period, you know, with the ro well, how'd you get into that originally, wearing those crazy costumes? I mean, well, uh, I had to in Macon, Georgia. Racism was so heavy. Uh, you had to disguise yourself. I had to disguise. <laughs> earnestly, I had to because I was the first artist, black artist, to sing for white people, and they didn't allow me to talk to the white girls. And so what I had to do, I had when I put on my eyelashes and my hair was that high and my headband and my makeup, uh, I would go and talk to a white girl, and they said, "Oh, Richard, oh, Richard." My band boys go, they said, "Watch it, boy." Mm. What did your mother think though when she would see you? When your mother would see you, like on the Mike Douglas show? And you were dressed in all this crazy stuff. Did she ever call and say, she was saying, tone it down a little bit, Richard? My, my brother said, Richard, that's ridiculous. He said, that's <laughs> terrible. My older brother said, Richard, please. And I had a high voice. I was going to say, Charles, he said, I'm going to kill you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it was really something. My brothers weren't ready for all those outfits I would have on. But I would have on mirrored suits and beaded suits, mirror shoes, rhinestone shoes. I would have rhinestones all through my hair, all up my arms. Uh, you know, Prince and Michael, they're dressing wild, but they haven't gotten quite as wild as I was yet. <laughs> the only I'm waiting on them, though, to get there. The the Y'all going to make it. How about Liberace? Oh, my God. Well, Liberace started getting wilder after me. I remember I was on Mike Douglas' show with him, and I wore my mirror suits one day, and he said, woo! He didn't know I was on the show, see, and he had never been out. And he looked at me, and he was able to look at, in, in, in my mirrors at himself. He found out he wasn't shining as, <laughs> as much as me. <laughs> I want to ask you your opinions. I wrote down just, just, some, just some people that, uh, of 
this, the period who came in about the same period of time you did in yeah. rock and roll. Okay. And your reactions to them. I'm going rea right. to react. I'm, I'm, I'm right. going to be very be, truthful. Be honest. Honest as I can be. Pat Boone. He took my song and he recorded it. And I'm so glad you did, Pat, because you made the road wider. Thank All you, right. Pat. Elvis Presley. I love him. That's my buddy, my baby. I love him. He was, we are very good friends. And it was a very great loss to the music world. Elvis is one of the greatest performers ever lived in, in this world. And electrifying, elevated, oh, he's just, you can't say enough. He's just beautiful. Uh, I love Elvis. A man at times. And a they, legend. They said at times you were feuding with this man, Chuck Berry. Me and Chuck, we, you know, I just like, <laughs> Chuck, I love you. Uh, uh, we are good friends, me and Chuck. You know, he, we just, he's old and I am too. We both are. And so two old arguments get together and start a feud. <laughs> oh, Chuck. How about the, one, I of love my, one of my personal favorites? <laughs> Fast. Chuck is a legend, though. Please oh, let me say indeed. this. Chuck is a legend, and he is uh, one of the founding fathers. He is. And I love you, Chuck, and I love to hear you play guitar. And I ask you to do the duck walk. Don't you stand on that too long. You're too old, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, one last one. We'll take a break. Fats Domino. He's underrated. He always has been. I agree with you. He's yeah. one of the most underrated entertainers ever been. You know, he was really a country singer. Uh, you, if you listen to his music, Blue you Burry hear Hill, yeah. Yes, but he was underrated. He, Cause he, Fats was not outspoken. He didn't talk. See, if I saw, I wouldn't get enough courage. I said, "Hey, put the cameras over here." Fats wouldn't do that. He used he to would move. Say, the, hey, hey. He used to uh, move the say, piano. Hey. Yeah. Remember when he moved the piano with his stomach? With his stomach. With his stomach. Yeah. He would always push the piano it's true. Uh, with his stomach. I used to feel sorry for his stomach, <laughs> but he was kind of keeping it down. <laughs> hey, we'll be back and wrap things up with Little Richard right after this. All right, <laughs> uh, we're back. Just a minute here with Little Richard. Uh, it's been it's gone by all too quickly. His book is The Life and Times of Little Richard, the Quasar of Rock. Charles White uh, actually wrote this with you, and on the front is a quote from Mick Jagger saying, Little Richard is the king. Uh, Richard, you don't think we're ever going to co coax you back to the piano? No, I uh, I think that I've had my day, I've had my way, Even and I'm just I'm James just, Bond came back. And that's right, never but I'm say never. No, I'm just gonna say nay, nay, nay. <laughs> oh boy, it's been beautiful. I'm, I'm really had a good time today. It's been a lot of fun. You know, uh, um, it makes me feel I feel young today being on the show and and seeing all these people coming in just to look at me. It it, it makes it's so elevating. Uh, Thank y'all. You're quite I welcome. Really like Let's it. have a nice thank you, everybody in the studios <laughs> and watching for a Little Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's you. funny, we started, a, we started the program with two people here, and gradually during the course of the show, people from offices and everything have come and standing behind the cameras. And there's one last question. What did you do with all those costumes? They Where all, are they now? They're in my closet. My mother locked them up because I was giving them away so fast, so I gave one to uh, Dick Clark to put in Washington in the Smithsonian, Smithsonian Institute. And uh, we have one in Atlanta in the same place, type yeah. place. And I'm, I'm using them for different things. They're going to have a museum in my hometown of me. Yeah, That'll be good. One last thing. What, what kind of music are you listening to today when you listen to rock? You got to buy, if I sent you the record store, what three albums might you want to buy? Uh, if I went to the record store, the three albums that I would like to buy if I went, I would get one by Jimmy Swagger. I love country. I'm a country music right. nut. I was before Charlie Pride, y'all, but I just couldn't get in the, right. in the country and hall the of fame. And the other two? The other two would be, um, I would get one of Mahalia Jackson's old records, and the next would be Andre Crouch. All right, that's it. Little Richard, we loved it. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.